In this week's EV news, a record number of EV chargers were installed in the UK in 2022. A study shows that electric cars are driven further on average than petrol models, despite claims of range anxiety. California bans Tesla from describing its cars as full self-driving. And more Ionity chargers could be coming soon to the services at Chippenham. Welcome to the first EV news of 2023 and we've got some cracking stories lined up for you this week. As always make sure you click that like button and if you're new here subscribe to make sure you're one of the first to hear about the next video. First up I can often be accused of only bringing you the doom and gloom focusing on those negative stories that are out there. Well here's a positive news story for once. A record number of public EV chargers were installed in the UK in 2022, with more than 8,700 being installed to the year to the 22nd of December. This brings the total available number to more than 37,000 according to ZapMap, who collect data on chargers and charging, as well as operating the popular website that we all know and love. This represents a 30% year-on-year increase slower than the 38% annual growth in sales of electric cars during the year to November, but still showing that charger installations are in fact on the rise, despite some of the doom and gloom out there about there not being enough. Now I'm sure some of you will still come at me in the comments and say, oh well it's still nowhere near enough, there's still not enough chargers out there, but what can we do? Boris Johnson's government announced a target of 300,000 public chargers by 2030, when that all-important ban on new petrol or diesel cars is planned to come into force. Year-on-year -year growth of 30% like this would be enough to meet that target, but that would mean that by 2025 we'd be installing 19,000 in a year, and that number would increase each year to 2030. So, Quite ambitious targets and you've got to question really whether the current crop of providers are going to manage to do it. I also wonder whether we'd need to see some mergers and acquisitions to happen amongst the charging operators because let's be honest there are already far too many different operators and if they all continue installing more and more chargers as we move ambitiously towards those targets then public charging will be even more of a fragmented convoluted mess than it is today. I think we need some simplification. I'm particularly concerned about the way local authorities are allowed to decide their own strategy for charger installations in their areas. It's very clear so far that this isn't working in certain parts of the country where, I mean, they're just completely neglecting it and I think hoping that it will magically all be sorted out by 2030, presumably. We need common strategy that prioritises installations based on need rather than just the availability of central government funding and then perhaps some of those incentives that operators can offer councils as well. I remember talking about Ubitricity a few months ago in a previous video where they were saying, oh well, councils can use us and we'll incentivise them to install charges. And yeah, I'm not sure about that. But that being said, I've said a few times we should never moan about more infrastructure being installed. And I stand by that. So news of record numbers of charges being installed is definitely positive. No doubt about that whatsoever. Feel free to tell me how much you disagree with that statement in the comments. Go on, knock yourselves out. Next up, an interesting study that I definitely think contradicts some of the most common misconceptions about EVs. New Automotive have found that electric cars are, on average, being driven 1800 miles per year more than petrol cars, despite all the fuss about range anxiety. Using the data from MOT tests, it can be seen that EVs on average travel 6,000 miles a year versus 4,200 for petrol and 5,500 for petrol and diesel combined. Now before you tell me in the comments that you do personally 100,000 miles a year in your diesel and you mostly do that with ever, without ever having to stop, remember that these are averages across every car in the country that goes through an MOT, so there will be a lot of reasons why those numbers might be a bit lower than you expect. The chief executive at New Automotive said that buyers of electric vehicles are likely to be using them for frequent short trips. That's an assertion that I'm not sure I 100% agree with, but it's one possible explanation for seeing a higher mileage. He also said that range anxiety has been significantly overstated, probably for a number of years now. 
it was probably more of an issue when batteries were smaller and that the when the charging infrastructure was more sparse. Now that I do agree with, modern EVs with larger batteries and faster charging almost entirely remove any notion of range anxiety for me. I don't know about you, but driving something with a bigger battery that can charge at 100 kilowatts, 150 kilowatts, I, you don't even really think about range personally. I think it's far more likely though that people are buying an EV that actually need to use the car that they've spent loads of money on. Whereas there's bound to be loads of petrol and diesel cars around, particularly older ones that, that barely owe their owner anything, or you've got classics and stuff that are deliberately not driven very far, and those must be skewing the numbers. The new automotive data also suggests though that EVs with medium sized batteries, like 40 to 50 kilowatt hours, like you know the Leaf, Peugeot 208, that kind of thing, travel just as far as models with the biggest batteries. Now that suggests that there's less concern about smaller batteries being usable, so maybe we need to scale back this out and out obsession with range and adding bigger and bigger batteries. I think they're being bought by people who need a car that's a real workhorse, looking for something that is going to save them money, and of course, it saves them money if they do a lot of miles, said Mr Nelms. It's an interesting story, I'm sure you'll agree, and it is one that definitely goes some way to counteract some of the utter drivel out there that suggests that EVs are less usable. It's interesting stuff for new automotive, and I'm sure we're going to see more data like this from them in the future. Over to news from California now, where a new law has come into effect that bans Tesla and other car makers from advertising their cars as full self-driving, the name given to Tesla's popular semi-autonomous driving feature, amid concerns that such claims are misleading consumers. Senate Bill 1398, sponsored by Democrat State Senator Lena Gonzalez, states that car manufacturers and dealers must provide consumers with a clear description of the function and limitations of these semi-autonomous driving features. The bill pro pro prohibits a manufacturer or dealer from deceptively naming, referring to, or marketing these features said the bill signed by California Governor Gavin Newsom in September and set to come into effect on the 1st of January 2023. Even though Tesla has claimed that its cars have a full self-driving feature, the company is yet to demonstrate that its vehicles can safely engage in complete autonomous driving without driver assistance. The company has also been named in several legal cases and investigations over its advanced driver assistance system, as well as an ongoing investigation by the US Department of Justice over its advertising for its autopilot features. A manufacturer or dealer shall not name any partial driving automation feature or describe any partial driving automation feature in marketing using language that implies or would otherwise lead a reasonable person to believe that the feature allows the vehicle to function as an autonomous vehicle. The main reason this caught my attention was I can see this being the case elsewhere in the world too. California, of course, famous for being a little bit overcautious when it comes to health and safety and putting warnings on things, but I've always thought that autopilot, full self-driving, these feature names used by Tesla were a little bit misleading. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think we'll see other governments take action on this and take California's lead? Introduce legislation to actually control how these features are being marketed? I certainly hope so. And finally, some more positive news about charger installations. I know, right? Twice in one video. Wow. The owners of a service station just off the M4 are hoping that they're going to be allowed to install 12 additional EV charging points. Chippenham Pit Stop, a family owned business at Junction 17 of the M4, say that their business has been boosted by the installation of six charging points in the past two years. Four 350 kilowatt charging points were installed by Ionity in December 2020 at this location and they increased that number to six in October 2022. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll remember that I charged the e-tron 55 that I had from Onto for a bit at this location and had an overall decent experience there. Although it was actually quite clear at that time that it was a very popular location for charging indeed and that some expansion was going to be required in the future to keep up with demand. The video link is in the comments if you'd like to check it out. Managing Director David Hathrow is now hoping that Wiltshire planners will approve the installation of 12 more charging points that he claims put his business on the map.
He said, while providing first class facilities for our hundreds of trucker customers remains our core business, there's no doubt that the installation of charging points has significantly increased our general public footfall over the past 12 months. The chargers really put us on the map for motorists on the M4, because while powering up they also stopped for coffee or popped into a restaurant for meals. Not only that, word appears to have spread among their friends without electric cars that Chippenham Pit Stop was a great place to take a break. Now I always think this is great news, right? Someone's looking to install more charging points, but especially in cases like this, where they're doing so because the ones they have have proved to be a roaring success. Increasing the number of chargers at this location to 18 would make it a massive hub for the M4. It's already very popular as it is, but I hope that the planners see sense, wave this one through, and I, I can't think of any real reason why they wouldn't do that. It's already an established service area and it will just have some more cars going there rather than just trucks. But that's all for this week's EV news. Do let me know your thoughts on any of this week's stories in the comments and make sure that you've both liked this video and subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.